this thing is so stinking cute. I finally got the flower off the top, that stupid rubber flower, which I will admit was adding to the aesthetic, having that extra pop of color, but I just, I couldn't leave it on there. Oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I'm just hanging out in the grow space. I have a few plants to repot. Not much going on this week for a few different reasons, really. I'll start with my internet. Having some issues with Charter Spectrum and my internet. It took like nine hours to upload Wednesday's video. That's not normal at all. That video was like six gigs. It shouldn't have taken more than an hour max. So a long 30 to 40 minute vlog this week, that's probably not happening because it would take multiple days to upload. And they're gonna be out here working this afternoon, maybe changing out some lines. They were here the other night until like 11 p.m. And the internet worked better before they came out to fix it, right? That was being shoddy, like it would just cut in and out a lot throughout the day. So called them, they came out and were here for hours and made it worse. That's a, that's a whole rant I don't really need to go into. Basically, gotta keep this short. And I also, I'm, I have some babysitting <laughs> obligations, unexpected obligations this week that's going to cut in to the time I needed to film. So instead of doing some more elaborate things that I'd wanted to do out here, mostly with the plant shelves. I think we're just gonna chill, pot up some plants, got those plugs in the mail from the Green Escape, and just, just hang out and talk. That, I, I hope that's okay. Just filmed the Spathophyllum video, immediately took those back in the house when I was done filming, cause you know, there's spider mites out here. Not a lot, it's gotten much better, but I know they're still here. I haven't seen them, but I know they're still here. Like if I were to not spray the name for just a few days, I can guarantee, not just a few days, if I were to go a week or two without spraying the neem, then suddenly somewhere they're going to show up. So I'm sitting on top of the spraying, but y'all know, spathophyllums, oh, they are spider mite magnets. So I made sure to get those right back into the house as soon as I was done with that video. So I have the plug sitting over here because right before that spathophyllum video, I unboxed those plants from the Green Escape, and they're sitting over here waiting to be potted up. I don't think there are really any updates to give in here with the plants. They had these begonias that were sent from Hertz that I thought might have a chance, but it's been a couple weeks now. Nothing's coming out of this one, so I'm going to say this one's probably toast. Probably. That's toast. It would be doing something by now if it had a chance still. I think the other one in here might have a leaf coming up in there. I'll give this one some more time. The uh, Xanthosomas, which are what I cared about the most, they're the main reason I placed the order. Two of them looking pretty good. The other two, they dead. They're not coming back. These two are the ones that I cut all the way down to. Although this actually, it's firmed up. It was more mushy. I kept treating it. That's firmed up, so maybe it will come back. This one over here, though, that's squish. So I'm taking it out of there. All this is going to do is attract fungus gnats. This is good, freeing up some space. And then I have to decide, is the juice worth the squeeze? Do I feel like waiting for this to maybe put out some growth trying to feel underneath here like is there even a bulb left on this a corm worth saving uh yeah there is see that it's gonna be hard to see you can come down in there you want to zoom there we go see that bit of green so this will put up offshoots sometimes when you have a plant that has a corm or a bulb die down like this one did all the way down there to the roots and you have to cut it back like that you lose the big plant which is unfortunate but you get lots of little offshoots off of it that'd be good i'm fine with some offshoots offshoots are nice to have pluck them off and have a whole bunch more of them starting from a smaller size but that's okay ring of fire this is the second leaf that's opened up since i brought it home then i don't think it's even been a month since i brought this home so i'm very surprised with how vigorous it's been growing the one up here isn't growing as well it's put up a new leaf so it's just one leaf behind that's pretty good moonlight over here that's popped open probably three leaves that thing's grown like a champ i'm thinking i don't really want to move the ring of fire up to this next shelf up because it seems to be doing so well on the one below but i could really use the space here and it would probably be just fine through with the aeroids this whole I'm not going to go too far into it. The whole shelving system, I have been talking about how there are things I want to do to revamp it. And every time I order a part, it either doesn't show up or it gets canceled in the process of delivery. Like something's been going wrong every single time. I've ordered some extensions to put on here, some three foot extensions so that I can raise the shelf up much higher. And uh, the, it's like three different attempts at ordering them. They're just not shipping them. I don't know what the problem is. Or they have shipped them. They don't show up and end up canceling them. I think it's probably somebody who's drop shipping stuff from China 
and just doing very poorly at it. I've been getting refunded every time, so I'm not out on any money. It's just really annoying because I need to get this shelf lifted up by about a foot because I need some more space down here and this shelf needs to come up about a foot. I think I just said I wasn't gonna talk about all the plant shelf stuff because I talk about it and nothing ever happens. I'm gonna wait till the parts come in and can talk about it some more. The whole point there though, I'll just finish off that thought, is that if I were to be able to get this lifted up by about eight inches to a foot, then they're gonna be closer to the lights. I won't need to lower the lights down and I'll have another rack to hang some more lights from, even though I don't think they need it. I actually, a couple of the plants that are up here have been getting too much light and I had to relocate them. So maybe potentially none of that even matters. I don't know. What I do know is I need to focus on these four little plugs down here that are getting smothered by the epiprenum that's coming around the corner there. Come on, get out of there. All the way from over there, the Cebu Blue, that thing is growing all the way up the walls all the way up there and it has vines reaching all over the place. It's kind of fun. I don't mind it. That's the reason it didn't come out with the house plants last summer because it was, well, it was rooted to the wall. And I decided that was okay. It can grow up the wall. I'm fine with that. That can be fun. This vanilla orchid, I should also repot this. It is starting to grow up all over the shelves. I left it in here all summer because it was doing so well in here. I said, okay, if you're happy in here, I'm fine with that. You can grow all over the plant racks. That's a fun aesthetic to have a vanilla orchid, variegated one, shooting all over the place, but I do think it would maybe appreciate a larger container. That's an epiphyte. I don't really know if it needs it just yet. Doing a mini plant tour, it wasn't intentional, but here we are. Moose of Florida, getting some good growth out of it. Some brown edges, that's just from me being inconsistent with the watering. That happens this time of year. I don't stick to a watering schedule. It's just when plants look thirsty, I water them, and typically I wait until the bulk of them look thirsty to water. It's not the best practice to have, but when everything's sharing a tray with the water in it, the soaking tray, kind of the way that I have to do things, but it's starting to acclimate and seems to be jiving better with the other plants on this shelf. This is an acuminita that got cut back, I don't know, a month or so ago. It was too tall. It was all the way up there at the top. I cut it in half. It's got lots of new growth coming out of it. And down below, I've never even talked about this one. This is the hula pink begonia. This is wrapped around the queen palm during the summertime in this coconut liner and I pulled it down because I was like, this plant's way too cool. I don't know if I'll find them next year, being this year at this point. I would think that I would because I've been seeing them on a lot of grower sites from a lot of wholesalers, but just in case, I thought may as well bring it in. It's gonna need a big cut back here, really probably now, but I'll probably wait a couple more weeks because it struggled transitioning to being indoors much more so than a lot of the other begonias have. A lot of the other begonias came in and they didn't skip a beat. Uh, the Fridex from that very bad Etsy seller, whatever their name was. Look at that, it is looking nice. Probably doubled in size in the last few weeks. It's great, it's pretty much what I would expect out of a fried egg. The Monstera tucked away over there. It was getting too much light, so I decided to let it get shaded over there by the Ring of Fire. And everything else I think is just business as usual. Not much going on, things are growing. Getting some fun new leaves out of everything, but nothing really to report about. Oh, no, no, that's not true. There's something weird going on over here with the freckles. I mentioned this at the end of last week's vlog, and I said, I'm going to wait to talk about this because I want to do some research on it. I haven't done the research, but we can talk about it anyways. Go ahead and set these down, though. For a moment, I need to free up my hand. So the freckles. This is a croton that typically has much smaller foliage. You see this very nice, multicolored, just absolutely beautiful foliage. Aren't those leaves fantastic? But they're small. Right up here though, we're getting nice big leaves that do not look like what you would typically get out of a freckle. So this is the first year I've grown freckles in this location during the winter time. So I'm thinking that this is probably just a factor of the plant stretching for more light because the grow lights are further up over here. But there have been winters where I overwintered freckles like in the corner of the garage because it's such a sturdy croton that I would just keep it with plants like a bougainvillea, a lantana, plants that don't really need much light during the winter time. You keep it more on the dry side and the cool side. And it, I, well, it didn't thrive, but it didn't die either. It didn't drop any leaves. It just hung out and did fine that way. And then last year I kept it up here on the shelves, which was okay but I don't want it up there this year because of the spider mites. It's a lot harder to check for the spider mites when everything is up above you. That's another reason I haven't like gone hardcore trying to get this shelf moved up just yet because 
well, I want to handle the spider mite thing. Two more weeks of spraying. Oh, if I had the supplies, I would have done this a while ago because I am anxious to get it moved up. But it's better that it's down lower so I can see what's going on with the pests. It did okay up here, but I did have to do some cutbacks on it. It dropped its leaves at one point. It gets very warm up here, so I've pretty much been keeping plants up here that can take that heat, which right now it's just a cactus and some begonias. A somatophyllum. I, I still have a lot of room up here where I could put a few more plants and I'll probably do that in a couple of weeks. I want to do some more spraying like I was talking about but the thing is with the freckles. The plant has a lot of stems down there in that pot and it's not just the one growth. If it was just the one growth I would be wondering if maybe this is a plant that reverts. Sometimes you have plants where they'll revert back to one of their parent plants when they've been across. But since I'm seeing it come up from the majority of the stems, like look at this one. This leaf is huge for freckles. That's not normal. I'm thinking it must just be a light thing because there is a difference between keeping the plant over further in a darker location where it's just hanging out versus keeping a spot where there is light, there's warmth, there's airflow, it's getting water. It's being signaled to grow. So I think that what's happening here is it just, well, it just needs more light, right? Has anybody known of their crotons, of your varieties, whether it be a paintbrush, a Picasso, pie crust, which is very similar to a freckles, but they have a rippled texture along the edge of the foliage. Lots and lots of different types of Codium variegatums that have multiple parents. There's tons and tons and tons of different types out. Have y'all ever known them to revert back to one of their parent plants? I doubt that's what's going on here, but it's something I'm gonna keep an eye out for. Not the end of the world if that's what's going on. You can just cut the whole thing in half, let it regrow from the base, and it should be just fine. I don't think that's what's happening here because, like I said, it's happening on a lot of the stem. It would be weird for this plant to be reverting back to one of its parent plants on all of the stems at the same time. I don't, that wouldn't be normal. Not typically how it goes. I think it's just a lighting thing. I have a hook up there and another light on the way. I don't know why it's taking so long, but there's another light on the way. That'll brighten things up, see if that'll make a difference. Who knows? Nice, beautiful leaf coming out of the Prince of Orange. That It is a Prince of Orange. People always go, that's a Macaulay's. It's a Prince, well, it was labeled as a Prince of Orange and during the summer months, the leaves come out orange. <laughs> but generally, I'd say October through, I don't know, May, June, they come out more of this reddish tone. Don't know why, that's just what it's always done. I have also wondered though, if it was a Macaulay's finale because of the color of those leaves, but it sends out orange leaves during the summertime. I could understand the uh, Prince of Orange throwing out more reddish foliage at certain times of the year, but it would be very odd for the McCoy's finale to throw out orange foliage during the summertime. Does that make sense? I don't know, that's just, that what doesn't add up to me. Yeah, I don't know. Not much of a mystery going on there, just something I thought I would mention with these. Why do I have two different, oh, okay. But I have two different size pots going on there. Not doing anything special with these. These were all talked about in that last video, the plants from the Green Escape. I think I'm going to start with the Fry Deck because it seems to be the most fragile. These have only been here for a few hours and it's already looking sad. Just surprising because the plug is moist. Wouldn't expect that so soon. Just using the Fox Farm Ocean Forest potting mix on these. Nothing fancy, nothing special. This one has netting in it, which is okay. It should dissolve, almost always does. It's usually only very delicate plants where leaving that netting in is a problem. You can usually tell from feeling it if it's going to be a problem. That one I don't think would have been a problem, but it was already coming off, so figure may as well remove it. I love these variegated Frydex. I am surprised that the price is still as high as it is on these because they've been around for a minute. And uh, I don't recall them ever being crazy expensive, except for during 2020 when everything was insanely expensive but generally they were like i don't know a couple hundred well okay that's expensive two to three hundred dollars that was usually for a plant not just a little plug the plugs are still running from like 30 to 50 bucks a piece some places are even selling them for a lot more than that i think that that's odd since they're so vigorous I had a huge cash grab selling these things because they are very vigorous fried eggs throw off runners and babies like insanity. It is so easy to grow one of these plants and then within a very short amount of time be able to go in and divide out at least a dozen corms from them. A lot of those are probably seed and potentially tissue culture grown, I'm guessing, with the ones that are in plugs. That's a process that takes some more time. I can understand that. I don't know if I talked about it enough in the haul video, the one prior to this one where I unbox these plants. I am pretty obsessed with this double dot 
Maculata. I know it doesn't seem like that much of a change from a regular Maculata, but in person, this thing, it really has a good amount of shine on it. See this wrap? It's the paper kind. Really don't have to worry about those at all. It's just the wire ones where I'm a little bit more cautious. It's rooted into the entire plug, I should say, very well. So it doesn't need anything to help hold it together at this point. I did not put anywhere near enough soil in there. One thing I've been doing this winter that's different from winter's past is just buying pre-bagged soil. It generally goes against my nature. Up until, well really up until 2020, I always mix my own soils. I'd start with just a cheap all-purpose potting mix and adds all sorts of things to it so I can make big bulk quantities. And then, you know, some stuff went down in 2020 that made it so I wasn't really able to do that for a couple of years. And that's when I started using the Espoma mix because I could get it in really large bags. I need big bags. I plant up really big containers in the spring and summer. So that was 2020 and 2021 and some of 2022. I was using mostly Espoma. I'd go back and forth. Sometimes I'd use Stay Green. The Stay Green here is very muddy. You know, the soils vary depending on where you live, where they get the stuff from. But whenever I buy the bags, it's muddy is not the right word. Very dense and heavy. So I have to have the proper usage for it. Typically just a cheap bag of miracle Grow. Throw in bark chips, charcoal, seaweed, kelp extract, lots of just organic materials, bat guano, worm castings, all that fun stuff to help build it up. That's difficult to do <laughs> during the winter time because it requires a lot of space. I would mix those things in a 45, 50 gallon brute trash can that was on wheels. I just don't have room to be doing all that because every single thing you mix in is another bag that has to be stored somewhere. And then I have to haul around that giant tub every single time I want to repot something. It's just, it's always been difficult during the winter time to make that work. So this year I was like, you know, I don't have a ton of stuff to repot as it is. It's mostly gonna be little things by the ocean forest. Definitely more expensive than going with the giant bags of Espoma. I've been getting it on deals on Amazon. I've gotten a couple bags from a local nursery. It's like 24 bucks for two of the, how big are these bags? Like 23 bucks for two of, <laughs> you can't see that for two of these bags. Not very big. That's 24 quarts for 24 bucks and they're lasting a long time because like I said, I'm not doing a ton of repotting this year, at least not in large quantities. And I like the mix because it's pH balanced. I don't have to worry about, okay, what's going on here? Sorry, easily distracted. Need to be careful with how I plant this one. It is not rooted very well into the plug at all. It's just a good blend. I don't need to add anything to it. If you're using Ocean Forest, you can usually go a few months without needing to fertilize because it's got all the good stuff in there as it is. I still do fertilize despite that. Plants root really well in it. I may have to cut this. Was my arm in front of everything I was doing that whole time? I'm sorry, that's my bad. I didn't mean to do that. What's done is done. I'm not going to pull this out and repot it again. I don't think the plant would appreciate that. All I did was fill some soil in around the base of that. This is going to be a problem. I don't have any little stakes to put in there to hold that up with and it's very weak where that bulb meets the plug. Guess I'll just have to be extra careful with what I do with that and where I place it for the time being until that gets rooted out. If this had a larger root system on it, I'd just cut everything off except for probably one leaf and get those roots to push out and it would reestablish itself. Really wasn't much going on with this one as far as roots are concerned. Uh, maybe it is a good thing that I'm potting these up in a separate video because you get more of a follow-up on the plants that I got. This way you can see what's going on down there with the roots. I think I'm just, I'm going to cut the top off of this. Okay. Doesn't have to be pretty, just need a big open hole on the top. Okay, I'm going to do very gently try and bundle these leaves together and jam them through this lid. Bring this down and that's going to add some stability, not a ton. I like these pots with the domes that came with them. I think I just got them off of Amazon sometime last year, but the lids don't snap on very well, which is disappointing. You would think that they would make it so those fit on there better, but they really do just pop off. So I'm going to throw some tape on here. Sure, it would be better to use something waterproof, but ideally this isn't something that will even need to be on there for more than hopefully a few weeks. Just long enough for the plant to establish itself and have some stability. Okay, I think that's good. Main thing is I didn't want the top of the plant rocking around too much because like I said, it really wasn't rooted all that well into that plug. And if you break that right at the top of the root, things end up being set back for a pretty long time. I have also very much liked the miracle Grow Organics, but I found that I do need to add to it. Generally need to put something else into the blend that has some chunkiness to it to help with drainage. The main issue I've really had with potting soil was with the Espoma mix. 
One, it being a coconut base, it's just pH neutral. So it's just hanging out at a pH of seven, which is fine, but my water is slightly on the hard side. My soil pH is usually between like six, four, six, eight, somewhere in there in the ground. But my tap water is usually around seven, four to eight. It fluctuates throughout the year, it fluctuates drastically throughout the year. And I just wasn't getting good growth out of it. And I'm just assuming that that was because of the coconut because everything else I've tried coconut with, I've had pretty much the same problem. So going with something that is going to be more acidic, like the Ocean Forest, for the most part, it's made things easier when it comes to issues like just, well, the pH balance of things. That's really all it comes down to, is you don't want the pH to be too high with the majority of these tropical plants. You wanna be below seven, well below seven for the majority of these plants. And I just wasn't able to pull that off with the espoma. That and the coconut with my drip irrigation, it just wasn't working. It was making it so that wherever my drip heads were, were getting nice and saturated, but the water wasn't dispersing how it needed to. So just wasn't getting the right growth out of everything. And I started mixing up my own blends again this past summer. It made a drastic difference in the plant growth. Sometimes with really big planters, I was fine with just using a big old cheap bag of miracle Grow, which aren't as cheap as they used to be. So if I'm filling a container that's 36 inches high and 30 inches wide, that takes a lot of soil. It usually took two and a half to three bags, which is like $45 worth of potting soil when I would do that. In those situations, I'll just use it right out of the bag. If it's a pot that's gonna be mostly annuals, I'll add stuff to it. And of course, stay on top of fertilizing, but for the most part, how did we get here? Why am I talking about this? Well, I said we were just gonna hang out and talk, and these are things that I thought would be good to talk about for a while and just never had the opportunity, so there it is. I haven't been using the Espoma, and it's why I'm using the Ocean Forest this winter instead of mixing up my own blends. It just makes life easier. When I do things in a larger volume, I'm still cutting the soil blends. I'll take the Ocean Forest and blend that up with other mixes instead of getting all the separate parts and pieces, the guanos and warm castings and all those things separately into a cheaper blend. And that's been working out fairly well. I think these might need to go into a tub where they can suck up some of that water because the soil is very, very dry right now. There we go. That's done. That's better. I'm happy it was bugging me that I had to wait a couple of hours because I had those other videos I had to film right away to get those potted up. Typically, that's something I like to do right away. There is moisture around the plugs. I was looking at them and feeling them. I could tell they were gonna be fine and they could hold on for a little while. None of these should need a humidity dome. The fry deck that's over there that I shut on the shelf, we talked about it a minute ago. It's been doing just fine without a humidity dome, so I would think that these should too. Oh, the apop ball, apop, apop, this one right here, the red sword plant maybe should get something for some humidity. I, don't know, I think it'll be okay. Humidity's pretty good out here. It should be fine. I still would like to pot up my favorite, my favorite new plant, the dragon skin peperomia. I'm interested to see people's feedback on that one. That video, the green escape video, that just came out within the hour. So I can see the comments here. Not seeing anyone say they particularly love that one. Laurel brought up the blue oil fern. Blue oil ferns are awesome. I uh, had some in a terrarium at one point. They were very good at spreading and sticking. They give you the appearance of the kind of like a tongue fern or even like an aquatic java fern. That silvery sheen to them. Silvery. Bluish. Like a blue metallic sheen to them. Kind of like you would see if you've grown any of the uh, sapphires, the sapphire colocasias. It's a purplish, greenish, black. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. They're very pretty. The cost on those has skyrocketed. They are very expensive now. It's on my radar, but it's not something that I'm going to be getting anytime soon until the price comes down on them. Lots of people saying how much they love the green escape, that they've had some good experiences. Judy just ordered a dragon skin and a Stella Calathea. I don't blame you. They're really cool. I was thinking that I would put this in the this planter right here because it's one of my favorite planters but I also feel like this is a plant that really it should go in something more impressive than a beige-ish kind of fleshy toned planter. I'm probably also going to put it in a bell. I have a little glass dish and a what's it called? A cloche to put over the top. Not because it necessarily needs it. These are peperomias. These are sturdy plants. This doesn't need to be under glass. Any peperomia I have ever grown under glass just thrives with very, very, very little care. I kept a peperomia under a glass bell once for two and a half years and I only watered that thing probably a handful of times and it just grew and grew and grew. 
and I would like for this to do that. It'll do that regardless, but I know that it's going to do a lot more of that under a bell. I'm gonna have to keep my eyes out for a container to put this in. I mostly just have like plastic pots around for anything this size. And like I said, I don't, I love this pot, but the two of these together, that's not really, that's not working for me. That, and I am a little suspicious that this may have been potted up fairly recently. Also, I wouldn't recommend you water right into the middle, but I haven't been left much of a choice because this plant is very over potted. There's a lot of soil in here, so I'm pouring it in through the middle with the hopes of gently rinsing out the excess soil without disturbing the roots. It's going to make a mess, but that's what this desk is for. I pop plants on it and things get messy. Then let that water wear down and I can see if the soil was just packed up too high. I think maybe they just threw an extra soil when they shipped it. I'm not really sure what happened there. I'm someone who generally pots their plants up low into the containers. I usually like to have about an inch gap, if not more than that, between the surface soil and the top so that I can give the plants a heavy drink and not have to do this where you just go ahead and give it a tiny drink and you give it a little bit more and a little bit more and you just have to keep doing that until the plant's been watered because there's too much soil. You don't want the soil to wash out. Luckily, I'm out here in my grow space where it doesn't matter if some soil washes out. There can be a small mess. It's not gonna hurt anything. Easily my new favorite of house plants. I love the minty green color that this one has on the foliage. Just something so clean and refreshing and it sparkles. It's a gem. I talked about it a lot in that video, so I'm going to just, I'll stop right there. You can watch that video if you want to know more about it. It's one that I do want to do something special with. Do some browsing for a probably four to six inch container. I think six inch would be excessive. Something else to put this in that's going to go well with that foliage and look nice under a glass bell. A very, very pretty plant. I would love to have that as a nice big, full, bushy plant. So divide it and have some more of them. It's exciting. Okay, I think <laughs> I've rambled enough. I said I was gonna try and keep this video short, or at least that was my intention. Don't know if I said it. Uh, that didn't happen. So I'll have to go upload this from somewhere else, not from my house, not where the internet's acting. But yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out for some plant chats, some updates. And, oh, I do have an update on this planter right here. Do you want it? Eh, I think we'll wait. I'll wait until the other plant. I have another plant to go in that planter, but I'm probably just going to buy another one of those planters to, you'll see. Comment down below. Say hi. Hope y'all are doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.